Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's time to meet our community, the Hispanic business community here in Orange County, powered by the Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and Orange County's only community radio station, OC Talk Radio, streaming live from our studios here at the University of California, Irvine's Beal Applied Innovation Center. And today, well, I'll let Ruben introduce him, somebody I think he's known for a year or two here. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. And welcome, everybody, to our podcast, where, because our community is your community. And we have a special guest today, a longtime friend, uh, Mr. Bobby McDonald, or we more affectionately know him as Bobby Mack. So um, uh, Bobby is the president of the Black Chamber of Commerce of Orange County. He's one of the leading advocates uh, for veterans here in Orange County for decades. And um, he co-chairs with me, actually, the Diverse Business Leaders Coalition of Orange County. And um, Bobby, we look forward to a, a great discussion, but we love to start out our podcast always with just you telling our audience a little bit about yourself. I mean, like, you know, where you were born, who, you know, just give us a little background about who Bobby Mack is. You think the audience really cares about what I'm, no, I'm just kidding, man. Uh, Thank you. I, I it's, a, it's an honor to, to be here. Thank you. You know, and, and what I do want to say to the audience, it's, it's, it's an awesome feeling to, to be here with the in this fine studio with the, working with the Orange County Hispanic Chamber. We, we go back a ways, uh, a long ways, uh, and uh, just, just uh, as a shout out to you and the crew, thank you for what you're doing and how you're doing it and, well, and, we and for being here. Well, we appreciate the partnership we've had yeah. for many decades Well, now. that's that's what we stand for. The yeah. Black Chamber has been, uh, is, well, on the 24th of February, we'll be 39 years old. That's right, that's yeah. right. So I gotta look forward to our 40th. But a little bit about me, I'm uh, an LA native, uh, was uh, a member of the, the wonderful crew that had to go through L.A. Unified School District, so 993 School, Gompers in Washington, and um, which I like to tell people about Washington High, First in War, First in Peace, and yeah. Mass and Southern League. But uh, a lot of good people came out of the, the city, and I, I'm glad that uh, I got to, to, to get up out of the city and get out here to Orange County. Um, went to L.A. Harbor College when I graduated from high school. Then uh, I, I majored in dominoes and bid whist in the Seahawks Center, and, <laughs> and the only one that would take my grades was the United States Navy. So uh, I, uh, I enlisted in the Navy back in 1965. Well, to, to, I'm not so sure if I remember the date. I think it was September 20th, 1965. Okay. I'm kidding. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I went to, went to Vietnam twice, was in 67 and, and in 68, aboard the USS Tripoli. We were... Um, the first aircraft carrier that was built to carry 5,000 Marines and five squadrons of helicopters. So we were uh, on duty and on station up in the DMZ and along the, up to the, to, well, Da Nang to the DMZ. And we, um, we uh, made sure that the, the Marines that were on, on shore were, were supported. And that's what our part of the Amphib Navy and the Amphibious Forces. So I'm um, kind of technically a, a gator navy guy that's part navy and part marine sure which is i don't like to tell the marines that because they always get a little jealous because they only they, they think they're they're the best of the five but anyway i won't tell them any different but uh got out of the service went back to la harbor college because i knew the value of education and uh, i just decided to go back and make up for what i did and it was pretty cool because i got a chance to you know, it's one of those things where there's no back door now. <laughs> I can only go forward. Right. And and I, I was and my motto was, and it still is today. Had there been a back door at the Alamo, all those guys wouldn't have died. They they probably would have figured out a way to get out. Sure. So you always try to put yourself in a, in a situation so you do have a back door, but you hope you don't need it. Right. And uh, my back door was, hey, I'm in the service already. Just move forward. Get your education. And I did. I wound up graduating from L.A. Harbor College and uh, transferring out here to Cal State Fullerton. And I had my cake and I was eating it, too. Got a chance to um, kind of kick back and play a little basketball. And I was on Coach White's at L.A. Harbor College's uh, first uh, championship team. Wow. And um, and then, uh, like I said, I got a chance to transfer out here. Oh, and I was the first black student body president at L.A. Harbor. So, really? Yeah. So. I combined, and I was the only one on the team that was working and had a car. So I was, um, I was like right now, I still staying pretty busy. But it was great to come out to Fullerton. Um, and, like, and as we said before we got on air, you know, I've been out here since August of 1970. Okay. So I've watched the county grow and move and matriculate. And boy, has it changed. It has yeah. really changed. Some things remain the same, but it has it, changed. Yeah. Um, 
I um, had an opportunity when I got here and graduated from Cal State Fullerton. Uh, I found out that my skill sets to play basketball were yeah, limited. <laughs> and uh, although I was good, but I wasn't as good as the rest of the guys. So I, I got more into the coaching area and I was very, very wonderful. I got a chance to be the JV coach for a while. Then when Bobby Dye came out to be mm -hmm. the coach at uh, Cal State Fullerton, you know, Cal State Who and Cal State Disneyland. I was one of the assistant coaches on that team. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I got a chance to go to the final eight, and I can, well, if we had more time, I'll tell you about all those games we beat with the uh, University of San Francisco and, 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 and in New Mexico and with Michael Cooper and those guys. So who yeah. was the best player you guys got to play against uh, oh, back then? Oh, there was a lot. There was a lot. You know, you, you, you beat uh, University of uh, U, USF, you know, and that was Quentin Daly. Oh, and, wow. we, and we yeah. played... Um, you know, we playing. Mar we we lost to Arkansas in the last what minute and a half. So I mean, we had Ar Arkansas. We used to, the thing is, teams would get up ahead and they'd relax, and then we'd come and get them. Okay, okay we'd come get them. So um, you know, when you think of uh, Marvin Delph and Sidney Moncrief, oh, yeah. that those are Arkansas guys. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm 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 really old school now because most people wouldn't even know who those guys were. But uh, they were pretty doggone good guys at Arkansas and in the pros, too. Sure. Yeah. But uh, the, I decided after uh, I graduated from Fullerton in 75 because it took me a little while, but I had to work and get to school and go to class and all that stuff. And, but I did it. And uh, I, had, uh, going to, I went to a basketball clinic up in Oakland, and I got a chance to meet the gentleman that was head of Pro Kids for the region. And Pro Kids was the shoe company. That uh, what, what were Uniroyal back in the old days, up right. until the middle of the '80s, all our shoes were made by the tire companies. So Pro Kids, Converse, um, was it, what was it? Uh, PF Flyers. P -P Flyers yeah. uh, 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 all those yep. were all made by the tire companies. In fact, uh, on the on the lakes, Lake Mishawaka and stuff, all the waterproof boots, all that stuff was all made there. And and, and so if there was a, a strike. At, on the tire strikes, when Uniroyal or Firestone or what's them had a strike, right. it stopped all the shoes, all the productions. But then they started going offshore. Nike came along and they started going offshore, and 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 then. Uh, but anyway, I went to work for Adidas. After this guy, I learned learned a little something from him. Did a little report for for one of my classes. Gave it to him and and told him the reason why some of those shoes weren't share, uh, being sold in Riverside, Orange County, in L.A. And so I wound up getting a job. So uh, a, a report that now people would probably get two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars for, or two point five million. Right. I got uh, a company car and a thousand dollars a month, and I was happy. Sure. <laughs> I was really happy to graduate. So I worked for Uniroyal, which was really a wonderful experience because I got a chance to uh, hone some of my marketing skills and sales skills, and uh, which really, really to this day, the the skill sets that I learned, the training that I got. Uh, it, it's st I'm still with me today. It's really with yeah. me today. Uh, then from there, um, uh, needless to say, things things happened. Stride Right came along and bought the shoe division from Uniroyal. And like any other salesperson, they, they, they dump you all. Sure. <laughs> However, I was very fortunate because when I was a manager, in, excuse me, a trainee in training, the manager in training's name was Dominic Ferlato. So when he took over as president, <laughs> of stride right guess who came back to work for kids i went i was working for them twice now but anyway um i was very fortunate in 1980 to uh get selected to 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 go work for a, another shoe company which was adidas so uh, i'm your, your first black sales rep to ever work for adidas in the united states really 1980 yeah uh what a historical piece that was uh uh, the the sh the when you see the shoes, uh, they have the little three what the three little lo the little logo yep. you have on your chest sure. looks like a marijuana leaf, um, but it ain't. Uh, if you take that little leaf and you put it together, it means three stripes encompass the world, because the three the Adidas did encompass the world. Um, uh, he uh, his name was Adidas. He got in trouble with Hitler, because he uh, made the special shoes for somebody named Jesse Owens. Oh, so yeah. when oh, Jesse, wow. so when Jesse Owens won the gold medal in '36 in Berlin, boom, uh, that was <laughs> uh, Hitler got mad and made uh, uh, Adolf Dossler uh, start making boots for the for the army. 
So uh, they say Adolf Dossler got upset and changed his name to Adi Dossler. So mm -hmm. that's how you get AD, Adidas. 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 But I know yeah. in your mind, you're thinking, it's all day I dream about sports. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny you mentioned, you mentioned Adidas. I bought my first pair of Adidas when I was a kid. They were $18, and my mom was so mad at me because for $18 back then, I'm aging myself, uh, you could have bought three pairs of PF Flyers or something for $18 oh, yeah. for Adidas. It was yeah. just a lot of money back then. Yeah. But, yeah. but, but, but the, the fun part about being with Adidas is watching their world, how they did things and how they made the, the factory and how they did things. And they, and they, they, were, they were right on point. They were perfect. Um, when the United States, back to World War II, when the United States came in to the facility in Germany, they, because a lot of the shoe workers and the management spoke English, they asked the the German they asked the managers to manage the the, 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 the camps and, and the prisoner wars because they spoke English. Sure. Yeah, but uh, it was pretty neat to, to learn those kinds of stories and and, and, the, and the history from that, that that period. I got a chance to work with Adidas to um, for the Olympics. And and, we, and and one of the things we did when we started the Orange County Sports Hall of Fame here was, I mean, Larry Myricks and, uh, let's see, Edwin Moses, all those kinds of guys, uh, Jurgen Lenz, all those kinds of guys were all, uh, you know, in, the, in the, uh, the Olympics. What was really neat during the Olympics in 84, Willie Knowles and, um, and a group of his friends, uh, Rosie Greer, they had a, a shop. Uh, so during the Olympics, Adidas comes in and they set up a cobbler shop right there in the community. And so if uh, like uh, Marcus uh, Johnson had a diff needed special shoes, they had them sure. made. So all those guys who had their shoes yeah. made right there. I mean, that's how detailed they are. Um, and, and it was work. But unfortunately, when the Olympics was over, uh, the, the Adidas company uh, bought out all the little distributors that we were part of. And so there we go again. So I got a chance then to, to start working on my own with some clothing and stuff. But eventually, uh, I decided, you know, I, I wanted to do something different. So uh, in the 1990s, well, early 1990s, I, there was a, the, 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 the Black Business Association that was here. Uh, I got involved with them because I wanted to help out in the community. Sure. Little did I know that two years later, uh, that you know, Milton Gordon, Dr. Gordon would come in and he wanted to do more for African-American male students at Cal State Fullerton. So that got my involvement with the, the chamber and I helped put together the first scholarship fundraiser and stuff for, for schools. In fact, actually we were doing African-American scholarships for Fullerton, Irvine and Chapman at the time. And then we increased it to do things with the uh, eight community colleges. Well, how long have you been involved with the chamber? Too long. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> well, since 1990. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I took over as president uh, kind of in 1994, 95, and um, I, I haven't found a real job yet. No, I'm kidding. But uh, the bottom line is, you know, I couldn't ask for anything better. Yeah. Uh, 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 and the things we've done, my involvement uh, and our involvement with the, the community, us, you and I getting together back with the Orange County President's Council, yep. making sure that we really had a, utilized that diverse community we had to try to make a positive at, impact and difference. And wow, I mean, when we stop and look at what we've done, and I, and I say we done, um, it's it's been wonderful. We, you know, from a from a legislative standpoint, from an advocacy standpoint, uh, from a community standpoint. Uh, for us really taking time out and to make sure that we respect, honor, and participate in Black History Month, Hispanic Heritage Month, Women's History Month, Native American History Month, boom, and, and, and knowing the time levels. In fact, that was part of what we did when we first started that Orange County President's Council was to make sure that we had a meeting and a calendar so we wouldn't step on each other's toes, but we also plan to be there to help support each other. That's right. That's right. Well, speaking of calendars, what are some of the things you have going on this year? I know you have uh, the anniversary on the, what, the 20, 24th of this month, right? You're doing the Well, it'll be the Future Leaders Luncheon. And right. we started that, uh, well, we started back in 19. 2019 maybe maybe 20 and we started that because i was finding and i was watching the change of the dynamics in the community and it, there wasn't that much people didn't know what was going on in the community okay um the chamber did 
but that, that's good to know. But Bobby, how are you going to get that out to the rest of the world? Right. So at that point in time, we had um, maybe three or four individuals that had become mayors or city council people. You know, Mama Mayor over at, uh, over at uh, Lake Forest was your first black city councilwoman and the first black uh, mayor in Orange County. And that in part because of Todd Spitzer. Oh. Todd Spitzer was there. I mean, I'm in the audience, and Todd Spitzer brought that home. Uh, and, and I won't go too deeper into it, but he did. And that was awesome because I'm in the room. And then Karen Robinson became the not only the second, but she was the first black mayor and mayor uh, and councilwoman in the city of Costa Amazing. And then she became the first woman black judge in Orange County. Those kinds of things that most people would never know about. From a business perspective, one of the highlights for me was at one point in time, the top four employers in Orange County were all headed by African-American males, black men. Okay, you had uh, Michael Drake here at UC Irvine. That's right, Michael Drake. Okay, you had President Gordon over at um, Cal State Fullerton. You had, uh, 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 was it uh, Greg Weir over at uh, UPS, and then drum roll. <laughs> Ed Greer, Ed Greer at, at Disneyland. Disneyland. That's yeah, right. that's right. I mean, those kinds of things that it, 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 it's not that people take it for granted. They didn't know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, coming up this month, uh, it's even better because now I'm, I, I'm, I, I found a couple of things that I didn't know. Uh, we have two black female uh, city council members on Los Alamitos, Ms. Doby and, and Ms. Uh, what was it? Trish Murphy, Ms. Doby. Ms. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, most people would never know that. We've got six black judges, and one judge just got appointed to be on the central district. All right? And didn't you go to some place called UCLA? I did. Okay. Well, just so happens that judge is uh, Fred Slaughter Jr. Right. Okay. okay. And Fred Slaughter Sr. was on John Wooden's first championship That's team right. with UCLA. 1964. <laughs> so I mean, mm. that kind of little small stuff. You can say it. It has, and we're real good friends. In fact, every time we get together, I always tell him about his dad because his dad was also one of the first black agents in, in in sports. Okay. Yeah, a lawyer and playing, but but anyway, it's those kinds of things and connecting the dots. But um, so, but anyway, this 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 on the future leaders luncheon, it, it gives us an opportunity to get the community, uh, have a lunch, not a banquet, but a lunch, and highlight a few individuals. And, 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 and do something different to keep people in loop. What we're going to do this year, I mean, when it comes, we'll be able to get three books. The first book will be Shaping Orange County by Stan Offerly. He did a real big, great job of highlighting all the things from Orange County since its inception. Okay. Uh, the second will be um, Mommy's Mayor, Mommy's Mayor from Letitia Clark. Oh, yeah. Letitia. And then the third one is going to be the Constitution of the United States. Because I'm not so sure with uh, but schools not teaching uh, civics. Hopefully, <laughs> we can go back to normal. <laughs> we should all be carrying a pocket constitution. I, I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, that's one of the things here. And then I guess, if I may slide a little bit here. Sure. Uh, because of my efforts with, uh, with veterans and having gone to Vietnam twice, I've been very, very blessed to carry the banner uh, for... Uh, for for veterans let me ask you a question how are we on time paul how are we in time five, five minutes okay all right well uh, the good news about it i had an opportunity uh, the real good news i had an opportunity to get appointed to the uh, california community college board of governors by the governor and i got a chance to start the, the first ever on the board uh, a veteran uh, veterans or a committee and we got a chance to start growing, growing veteran support on the veteran service offices on all the campus. All. Okay. And then uh, out here, we got a chance to, uh, I got a chance to be a part of the Orange County Veterans Advisory Committee. And, and now I'm part of Valor, which I'm not involved in anything and everything veterans here. But because 10 years ago, exactly 10 years ago, there was no money coming in for veterans at all. None. Zero. Zip. 10 years ago. 10 years as ago. Well as, wow. Yeah, 10 years ago. Zip. I, Orange County is number three. I mean, in the count in the state, you've got LA one, San Diego two, and sure. Orange County three. But between the two, we, we didn't have anything. We do now. But we're also my my pet project is working with Valor and Nick Berardino, and we're we're working with putting together the new cemetery out here in Anaheim yeah. Hills. Well, you've been one of the big advocates for that. I know. Yeah. We appreciate your leadership in that, and that's just 
huge accomplishment getting getting that done. So well, I think yeah, it is. It, uh, funny story. The the Todd Spitzer at that time was supervisor, and he got the land. He negotiated with Donald Bryn because uh, actually the Irvine Company was going to be houses up there. Okay, but uh, but you know, something happened or whatever. So we got the land to put the cemetery but Irvine was still playing with the city doing what they wanted to do and stuff on the base there sure. so Todd Spitzer came to me and he says okay we got the land but we can't say anything so you can't say anything so I, was, I thought that was pretty funny Todd Spitzer telling me telling I can't you, say you can't anything say yeah they're telling me I can't say yeah yeah okay yeah Mr. Mr. Loquacious telling the other loquacious, loquacious the other loquacious be quiet can, but we pulled it off doggone it we pulled it off Good. and um, uh, if you get a chance and, and those listeners here in Orange County, if you get a chance, go down the 91 freeway toward Corona. Or if you're on the, you get backed up a little bit on the 241 going into uh, the 91 crew to Corona. We put that flag there. First flag is right there. That's and awesome. Boy, it's, it's an awesome sight. It's an awesome sight. So, but yeah, no. Well, you mentioned UCLA. So I went to UCLA, obviously, and I did whatever it took. I had so many different jobs. And one of the jobs I had was reading scripts. And every script I, I read, I rejected. I, you know, I'd say, do not recommend, do not recommend. The only script I recommended was a script on Buffalo Soldiers. Wow. The only script. And I know you've been, once again, a big advocate, a big historian, just somebody getting out the word about what the Buffalo Soldiers were all about. Mm -hmm. I know you were just in the Rose Parade, which was really cool. <laughs> yeah. I see you on KTLA uh, early on the you know january 2nd yeah and uh you just and then you did it at your gala too you you just uh you just but you've just been like tireless when it comes to that when you want to explain to our audience a little bit about sure the buffalo soldiers sure and, i will and by the way you said uh, the script on the buffalo soldiers yeah. you know who what the ucla player ba basketball player played in that movie mike warren mike warren that's yeah. right so i'm, I'm hill I'm, street hill street blues well mike but warren. he was buffalo soldier for his hill street yes, blues. but absolutely. a good friend yeah we played basketball against each other Okay, so you yeah. get to play. So, oh, yeah, oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I, yeah, I know my limitations. Did you get to play against uh, Pete yeah. Maravich, too? Or no? no, that was okay. Pistol Pete. He was Louisiana. I couldn't That's get right. down to Baton Rouge. Okay. Gotcha. Bottom line is uh, my dad and my four uncles were Buffalo soldiers during World War II. Wow. And uh, they were master sergeants, uh, which is probably the reason why I understand uh, <laughs> discipline. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I had an aunt that was one of the first black nurses as an officer in the United States Army as a nurse down stationed down in Fort Huachuca, which is really cool from a standpoint. It was Eleanor Roosevelt and Mary McLeod Bethune and another nurse that went to the secretary of the army and said, hey, this is what we need. So they wound up making nurse, put nurses together and they sent them, in Tus they sent them to Tuskegee and they sent them to Fort, uh, Fort Huachuca. And, and then on my mother's side, uh, I, if I, I can t trace my wreck. I was looking for stuff on my dad, and I wound up finding out that uh, on my mother's side, on the Louisiana militia rolls for the War of 1812, there were two, I had two relatives, Bobasaurus, if you will, that was a maiden name, my mother's maiden name, on the rolls for Louisiana militia. So I go back to the War of 1812. Wow. But, uh, but uh, from an educational standpoint, and what got me deeper and deeper, Michael Hurd from USA Today, and I both uh, kind of wrote a book on the history of black college football, the historic, uh, you know, history, education, and pride. And one of the stories in the, in the book that we wrote, uh, and it's all on the historical black colleges, from the football, the bands, the sure. fraternities, you know, all that kind of stuff that went with it. And there's a section in the book that brings it home. In 1866, the, the colored troops, the 66, the right, right after this, Right after the Civil War, uh, the 62nd and 65th Colored Infantry pulled their resources and came up with $5,000. Now, keep in mind, those guys were making $13 a month, $156 a year. And they came up with $5,000 in 1866 and incorporated Lincoln University in Jefferson City, Missouri. Wow. That was the value of education. And as I dug deeper into it with some of the Buffalo Soldiers, I found out that if you were caught gambling or, well, let's, let's use that. If you were caught gambling and you didn't know your ABCs, you went to the brig till you learned your ABCs. All right. I, Are you advocating that we do that today? Is that what you're No, 
No, I, I don't think to <laughs> no, no, because uh, most people in, in jail know their ABCs. But I'm just saying. But you're looking at 1866. Yeah, sure. And, and I mean that's that's the value of education. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and then come to find out that my my grandfather uh, was graduated from Florida A and M. He's a Rattler, so he went to a historical black college. So, uh, you know, I, I'm 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 happy with what I'm doing. Uh, I'm loving it. The, the thing that we did at the banquet this year, I know we're short on time, but sure. but uh, it was the 125th anniversary of the 25th Infantry, which is one of the Buffalo Soldier Groups, that went 40, 41 days, 1,900 miles from Fort Missoula, Montana on the 14th of June, and then wound up in St. Louis, Missouri on the 24th of July. So they went that long, 50 miles a day, on bicycles. Yeah. And you had some of those bicycles. 1897 your, your gear, on yeah. bicycles. That's right. Yeah, so we've been riding replica bikes. And you mentioned the Rose Parade. Uh, we were there. We were part of the equestrian unit with the new Buffalo Soldiers. But we were the first bicycle group ever to be in the Rose Parade, in the history of the Rose Parade. Really? <laughs> yes, sir. There was no other bike. It's interesting. That you well, that. It, when I say that, I preface that because around right. the floats, right. they may have had bikes or something like right. that or bike thing, but never a group. A group. Yeah, yeah. either your float, uh, uh, equestrian, oh, or your correct. car. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, or a band, you know, whatever. Yeah. Well, uh, we appreciate you coming out today. I know time goes really f fast on this, uh, this podcast, and uh, we'll have to do this again uh, sometime soon. But we want to appreciate our guest. Uh, Bobby Mack or Bobby McDonald from the Black Chamber of Commerce, a good friend and a great leader here in Orange County. And thank you to our, our group at home listening to us today too as well, because our community is your community. So thank you everybody. Next time. Well, there you have it. Another great reason to tune in each and every time to meet our community, the Hispanic community, community here in Orange County and those that they know. Powered by the Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and Orange County's only community radio station, OC Talk Radio, streaming live from our studios here at the University of California, Irvine's Beale Applied Innovation Center.